Right now, hundreds of thousands of people around the world are waiting for organ transplants, like four-year-old Evie Green, who's been waiting for a new heart for a year. Will smart technology revolutionise organ transplants? And are 3D printed organs anywhere close to becoming the norm? Find out on Shift. A heart made from human cells using a 3D printer. Scientists in Tel Aviv already made this breakthrough back in 2019. The printed heart couldn't beat yet, but it was a sign that researchers were on the right path. The key here is printing using living cells, so-called bioprinting. 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, has been in use in industry for a number of years. It basically means building complex objects layer by layer. And a few years ago, this trend also made its way into the field of biomedicine. It enables us to print layers of living material, biological material, which have very complex material properties. We now have new possibilities in biomedicine and can hopefully print complex organ structures in the future using 3D bioprinting. So scientists can actually print organs using living cells. That's pretty incredible. In 2022, the first 3D printed ear was transplanted into a volunteer in the United States. But that was the last we heard. We reached out to the company 3D Biotherapeutics several times for an update on their current clinical trial without any luck. But this much is clear. The race to manufacture functioning organs using 3D printers has been going on for years. The first attempts at bioprinting artificial organs were made over two decades ago. One of the trailblazers is US surgeon Dr. Anthony Atala. In 2011, he 3D printed a kidney. First, the organ is measured using MRI scans. The data is then used to create a 3D model, which is then sent to the printer. The printer manufactures the model layer by layer, from living cells or, as shown here, from plastic. Researchers at Nottingham Trent University developed this liver using a 3D printer in 2021. It looks deceptively real, but it's actually made of synthetic material. It's supposed to help train doctors to recognise liver cancer. In 2022, 3D Systems and United Therapeutics presented a 3D printed lung structure. This synthetic creation should help regulate gas exchange the way healthy lungs do. Animal testing should offer insight into how it functions. It will probably still take some time before 3D printed organs will actually be able to replace traditional organ donations. But this technology is already proving to be very useful in medical research today. Like this 3D printed robotic heart made from synthetic material. Researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States have developed a robotic heart using a 3D printer. The replica is supposed to emulate the functions of a patient's individual heart. Researchers first create a three-dimensional computer model using data from the patient's heart. It's made up of soft, flexible synthetic material. The artificial heart is wrapped in sleeves that mimic a heartbeat. Each one is controlled separately to ensure that it pumps realistically. This way, the robotic heart can mirror the heartbeat of the patient. Researchers want to hone in on how the patient's heart is contracting. The robotic heart is not meant to be transplanted. Instead, it's supposed to help doctors better understand the heart conditions of individual patients and thereby pinpoint the best treatment. Very helpful for treating people with heart conditions, but not a solution for patients waiting for an actual heart transplant. Still, 3D bioprinting can be deployed in other ways, like for patients who need a bypass due to blocked vessels. Researchers in northern Germany are testing out this idea. Vascular surgeon Dr. Ruven Bant and his team are developing a new procedure. Artificial vessels are an age-old dream in surgery. As a cardiovascular surgeon, you inevitably end up in a situation where you're caring for a patient but don't have any suitable material to use for a bypass. For example, for a heart bypass or a bypass in the leg. 
Researchers have been working for many decades now on creating bioartificial vessels in the lab. It would enable us to help perform a bypass in patients that don't have the necessary bodily material. The research team's idea, a printer simultaneously presses two liquids to create a flexible tube made of biomaterials that's roughly 30 centimetres long. One of these liquids is so-called bioink. It's a type of organic ink that's enriched with human vascular cells. Its basis is alginate, a material made from brown algae. One drawback to this alginate is that cells can't really bind well to it. That's why we add peptides, which are small pieces of proteins that can be found in the human body, like collagen. The cells can now bind to these peptides, and the peptides can also send signals to the cells so that they feel comfortable and can survive and reproduce. After an initial phase using standard 3D printers, the team is now switching to a robot arm with a specially developed print head. One chamber in the print head contains the bioink, while the other contains calcium chloride, which stabilises the bypass graft. This may look relatively simple, but it actually requires fine-tuning a lot of different parameters in parallel. One challenge is that bioink does not have neotenic properties. In other words, it behaves differently from typical liquids and becomes more solid under pressure. This means we need to equip the printhead with resistors to ensure a uniform flow of the bioink. It's all incredibly delicate and precise work, so it's no surprise that the researchers have carried out countless test prints. One challenge, the entire structure needs to have a consistent thickness. If you take a look at this bypass, you can see how much it thins out on the sides. And on the other two sides, you can see that it's quite thick, so it won't hold up. The more symmetric the structure, the stronger the circular structure, the more stable it will ultimately be. The artificial bypass grafts are supposed to be as uniform as possible, so that they can function inside the patient for decades. After printing, the new structures must mature in a nutrient solution at 37 degrees for a few days. We usually print at room temperature, but keeping the cells at room temperature for a long time can be detrimental to the cells. So we print using this substance, and then we place them inside the bioreactor where the culture is kept at 37 degrees. The aim is for as many cells to survive the printing process as possible. If everything has gone smoothly, numerous green cells become visible under the microscope in the next lab test. These bypass grafts are being tested in animals, clearly a controversial ethical issue, but the scientists say it's necessary. And on that topic, 3D printing with living cells could actually even help to replace animal testing. For example, when developing new drugs. Pharmaceutical labs could use so-called organ-on-a-chip models. These devices can emulate how human organs function. Thanks to biochips, the need for animal testing could soon be reduced. The cells on so-called organ-on-a-chip systems biologically mimic human organs when they come into contact with active agents. Instead of animal testing, researchers are increasingly using these kinds of mini-labs. It helps them discern if substances are toxic to the human body or whether they could work as medication. The system basically consists of a microscope slide, at least one cell culture and microchannels. The membrane works as a carrier for the cell culture, while the microchannels supply it with air, nutrients and active agents. Heart, liver or kidney cells can be grown onto the chip or printed on the slide using bioink. Sensors allow the scientists to monitor the condition of the cells on the chip. Many laboratories have also started using cultures from multiple organs on the same chip, reducing the number of tests. Today, there are even chips with complex three-dimensional cell structures, which allows for more precise testing. 3D printing using living cells certainly looks very promising. Of course, it would be even better if we could print cells and organs exactly where they're needed, inside the human body. 
and scientists are already making big strides. Check it out. This is an experimental mini 3D bioprinter. The tool could directly print biomaterial onto organs and one day it could be deployed inside the human body. We can directly deliver multiple layer biomaterial inside the living body. Because the current uh, bioprinting technology, they have to make biomaterial outside the body. And then in order to deliver the material, they have to require open surgery. But open surgery, they require a lot of infection and blood loss. Similar to an endoscope, the soft and flexible robotic arm is inserted into the body, either through the mouth, anus or a small skin incision. Using BioInk, the device can print biomaterial onto organs and tissues, for example, to repair them after an injury. So this is a larger version of our 3D bioprinter. Uh, we ha this is basically used to deliver biomaterials to the injured site or after the surgery to facilitate the healing process. Uh, we have a camera located at the tip for the visualization, as we can see right here. And we have one channel at the tip to, for the delivery of the biomaterials. And at the back, we have the controllers to control the bending of uh, the bar printer. And it doesn't only print. It can also make incisions and spray water to clean the wounds after an operation. In the future, this medical tool could be used for different types of surgeries, including the removal of cancerous tumours. Especially this device can utilize on in one surgical device that can perform the ankle so big surgical procedure and therefore we can remove a certain type of cancer tumor inside the body like the gastric or the colon cancer. There is so much groundbreaking research going on right now, but what people who are waiting for an organ transplant need the most is more organ donors. Would you donate your organs or do you see 3D printed organs as the way of the future? Let us know and see you next time.